Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India chemistry and microbiology. This course will be taught by Professor Shudha Goel uh, and myself, Professor Anjali Pal. We are both from Civil Engineering Department of IIT Kharagpur. We have divided this course into two parts, Environmental chemi Chemistry, the first part that will be taught by me and the second part that is Environmental Microbiology will be covered by Professor Shudha Goel. Now, I already discussed in my first module the acids, bases and salts. In the second module, I have discussed about the chemical kinetics. In the third module, uh, in the third module, I have discussed the chemical kinetics. In the second module, I discussed about the, about the chemical equilibrium and in this module, I am extending the chemical kinetics but I am discussing about the mechanisms and the uh, catalyst which are also under the scope of the chemical kinetics and very important topic today. So, this is my uh, module 4 uh, and uh, uh, 19th lecture. Uh, this is the chemical kinetics, uh, this is the catalysis I will discuss and this is the part B. Uh, in my last lecture, I discussed uh, about the catalysis, but that was part A. Now, all of you know that catalysis, I already discussed that catalysis is very important for us. Uh, we have to develop uh, very new catalysts for different types of reactions and uh, the, the contents of this lecture is the uh, mechanism how it is happening for uh, homogeneous. I already uh, discussed what is homogeneous catalysis, what is um, heterogeneous catalysis and what is uh, biocatalysis that is enzyme catalysis, catalysis. Um, and here I will tell you uh, the mechanisms about those catalysis, how the reaction is going on and what is the activation energy um, uh, all those things I will discuss here. Now, O mechanism of catalysis. Uh, first, I will tell you about the homogeneous catalysis. So, here uh, one example is given, this is the thallium thallus, uh, thallium plus, uh, it is an aqueous phase reaction and it is a redox reaction. You see thallus is going to, uh, th thallium plus is going to thallium 3 plus and cerium 4 plus is uh, going to cerium 3 plus. So, it is a redox reaction, this is oxidized and this is reduced and this is the balanced equation. Now, uh, the possible pathways, uh, we have to, I already told you about the mechanism. So, now at least you can think about uh, the possible pathways. So, we can think about a single step mechanism. Okay? If it is a single step mechanism, here the positively charged ions collide, collide simultaneously in the aqueous phase to give the product. Okay. So, collision is necessary. If it is a single step process, then it will be thermolecular reaction and we already know now that thermolecular, thermolecular reactions are not very common. Then uh, what is the alternative mechanism that, that we can think of? Think. So, we can think instead of single step mechanism, we can think about a stepwise, uh, stepwise mechanism. What is that? Um, this is the first this is the first step say for example thallium plus plus cerium 4, four plus is giving thallium 2 plus uh, this is an intermediate because it is not appearing here okay thallium 2 plus is not there so even if in in one step we think about think that it is produced so we have to think another step where it will be consumed so it is an intermediate and then cerium 4 plus is going to cerium 3 plus but this reaction is very very slow. 
okay. and uh, we can think of uh, in the second step the thallium 2 plus which is the intermediate uh, is again reacting with cerium 4 plus to give th thallium 3 plus <coughs> and cerium 3 plus. So, this if we combine these two then we will see that it is coming, but this is a very very slow process. Okay. Now, if we add uh, if uh, we add silver plus ion here <coughs> then we will see that the reaction we can think think the mechanism in this way then we will see that reaction become faster okay at least much faster than this one okay what is happening if the silver plus ion is added then this is the this is the reaction it is a fast process this is a reaction and then uh, silver 2 plus is produced and cerium 3 plus is produced so silver 2 plus is the intermediate okay and then silver 2 plus is again consumed and silver plus is going back it is an intermediate stage of the this is a catalyst. So, it is produced from the catalyst, but catalyst should come back to its original position that I told you. So, even if it is uh, changing, but it should come back to its original state again. So, this is the second step slow process and then uh, the last step this is again fast process. So, thallium 2 plus uh, plus cerium 4 plus this is the uh, intermediate. So, it is it should be removed means consumed. So, again thallium 3 plus is coming cerium. So, if we combine these two then you will see that it is coming here. Okay. So, this is a <coughs> mechanism and this is a homogeneous reaction homogeneous catalysis. Okay. This way we can think of. So, for uh, when you think about catalyst catalyst then catalyst should come back to its original position when you get some intermediate that also should be produced, but it should be consumed and you should get finally, the uh, after combining all the reactions how many uh, 2, 3 whatever may be the reactions you think of then finally, it should give you the final uh, means uh, matching actual reaction. Now, uh, intermediate compound theory for homogeneous catalysis. So, this is a theory that is uh, given uh, for the homogeneous catalysis what is that? the catalyst combines with one of the reactants and forms an unstable reactive compound okay, called the intermediate. This intermediate compound then reacts with other reactant to yield the products and catalyst is released. Okay. Similar thing we have seen in the last example right, here it is molecule uh, it is also um, in chamber process that I already discussed the sulfuric acid synthesis where nitrogen oxide is used as a catalyst here it is nitric oxide it is shown. So, nitric you see this is the main reaction sulfur dioxide reacts with oxygen to give sulfur trioxide this is the reaction. Okay. Now, for this reaction NO is used. So, NO is used as the catalyst. Okay. So, NO how it is uh, acting as the catalyst by forming some intermediate what is that? NO first reacts with the oxygen to form NO2. Okay. This is an intermediate and then NO2 is reacting with SO2 to give SO3 and 2 NO. So, it is you are getting back you are getting back that uh, catalyst okay. regenerated catalyst is regenerated and then finally, SO3 is reacting with H2O to give the H2. So, it is the synthesis of H2SO4 industrial uh, level industrial scale okay, industrial synthesis. Now, so you can see here that uh, what is written here intermediate compound. So, it is an intermediate compound okay, compound here okay. in the last case it was ion here it is compound. So, in some intermediate should be formed okay. in the homogeneous catalysis this is the uh, common uh, mechanism. Okay. A catalytic reaction consists of several steps these form a catalytic cycle. So, when there are several steps, so all steps if you think together it is a catalytic cycle. Although the catalyst change during the catalytic cycle it returns to its original form at the end of the cycle. Other examples are acid and base catalyzed reactions. So, I will show you some acid and base catalyzed reactions. What are they say acid catalyzed reaction the general way it is shown and kinetic rate expressions is shown here. 
Acid catalyzed aqueous phase reactions are very common. It is really common. I have already given you some examples, right? Like the um, like the cane sugar hydrolysis. Okay, it is the um, uh, it is catalyzed by H plus uh, hydrolysis of cane sugar to form uh, glucose and fructose. That I told you. So here you see A is giving P. When A is giving P, it is catalyzed by uh, hydrogen ion that is at acid okay. and but acid N H plus is staying back as same N H plus. Now, if you think about the rate expression, so minus d c a d t is k h this is the rate constant h plus to the power n and c a, but this is this is catalyst. So, uh, as it is seen in equation 1 the h plus ion is acting as a catalyst and it is not consumed. So, h plus can be considered as constant then equation 2 can be written as this one. So, this one and this one can be uh, combined and this is k observed. Okay. So, it can be considered as pseudo first order reaction acid catalyzed reaction is pseudo first here it is pseudo first order reaction, but you can do this I, I already discussed this type of thing uh, when I was discussing the kinetics. Okay. So, here you can see that k observed is this one. So, k observed taking log you can get log k observed is log k h plus n log h plus. So, if you do the uh, vary the p h then you can get uh, and if you plot and uh, you can measure k observed then you can plot it log k observed versus p h then we can get the value of n from the slope. Okay. So, this can be done. Now, uh, base catalyzed reactions also similar, but uh, here it is OH minus just like the acid catalyzed reactions described earlier we can write minus d c a d t is nothing but k o h k o h into o h minus to the power n concentration of o h minus to the power n into c a uh, or d c a d t minus of course, minus is written because it is a reactant. So, k observed into c a and k observed is nothing but k o h o h minus concentration to the power n. So, taking log both sides we can get this equation and we can uh, we know that uh, uh, that minus log uh, OH minus log of OH, OH minus concentration nothing but uh, POH. So, we can uh, in terms of pH you can write this one because POH is nothing but 14 minus pH. So, the sign is changing here. So, this way we can uh, get this k value also uh, that uh, n value also. Now, what is the mechanism for heterogeneous catalysis? This is very uh, very interesting you can see here uh, the diagram here heterogeneous catalysis is uh, mainly explained by adsorption theory. Okay. So, adsorption is a uh, one step that should uh, occur. Okay. Now, solid surface mostly heterogeneous catalysis the examples you have seen that solid surface right solid surface as a catalyst both in gas phase and liquid phase reactions. I have given already some examples for this type of reactions. So, here is another reaction another um, example what is this this is the what is this this is the uh, uh, ethylene okay. ethylene ethylene means some double bond is there and um, some hydrogen is added onto this double bond to to form the ethane okay this is gas gas phase reaction in the gas phase without any catalyst the reaction is very slow however in presence of platinum as the catalyst the reaction speeds up how it is happening how it is happening uh, it is happening in uh, several steps what is happening uh, dissociation of uh, hydrogen to hydrogen atoms attached to the platinum surface takes place. So, first hydrogen is attached and then it is dissociation is happening. So, it is the hydrogen molecule you can see here in the gas phase this is the uh, ethylene molecule. So, first hydrogen and ethylene both are adsorbed on the platinum this is the platinum surface. So, uh, both are adsorbed then uh, it is uh, hydrogen atoms are produced then hydrogen atoms are added up in the 
stepwise addition is happening and then the uh, finally, the ethane molecule is going out. Okay. The reaction is going on here, but finally, it is, uh, it is um, uh, dissolved dissolved from the uh, surface of the catalyst. Okay. Then again uh, new molecules uh, are getting the chance to get adsorbed and then again reaction is going on, then again the product is going out like this it is a catalytic cycle that is happening. Okay. So, uh, hydrogen atoms then add sequentially to ethylene molecule and ethane is formed, then ethane is dissolved from the platinum surface to leave the surface free for further reaction. So, this way the heterogeneous catalysis the it is based on the adsorption theory it is explained. Okay. Now, uh, how does a catalyst makes a reaction faster? I told you already that by uh, it goes through another route actually uh, that way. Okay. Now, this is the RNS equation you already have seen when I discussed the chemical kinetics um, module 3. Okay. So, this E A is the activation energy. So, activation energy uh, is lowered in a catalytic means uh, when it goes to a catalytic process uh, by using a catalyst then the, this is the reactant this is the product it remains the same the position of the reactant position of the product is same, but without catalyst it goes in this way and with catalyst it goes this way. So, activation energy is reduced. Okay. Uh, and uh, so it becomes the it becomes faster same catalyst will speed both the forward and reverse reaction you see that um, when it goes from uh, means forward reaction from reactant to product this way it go this way it goes and from product to it goes to this reverse way but um, but catalyst is means reducing both the um, activation energies it lowers both the activation energy both forward and backward okay their uh, presence may change the uh, rate expression that is something else but uh, lowers both the activation energies equally equally it lowers both the activation energies equally okay that is most important the free energy change does not depend on the path so the position is not changing reactant and product so this is the free energy change it is not changing so, this is a thermodynamic parameter. So, um, but what is the reaction products that are not thermodynamically favored the reaction products that are not thermodynamically favored cannot be formed by a catalyst this is very very important. If some reaction is not possible whatever catalyst you give it will not be possible. So, uh, so once the reaction is possible then by using the catalyst you can make the reaction faster or slower. Thus, the role of catalyst is to speed up the reaction which are thermodynamically allowed. The reaction should be thermodynamically allowed, but by applying catalyst you can change the speed or rate of the of the reaction. This is very in important concept. Now, uh, <coughs> enzyme as a catalyst in our body system I told you there are many enzymatic reactions are going on many free radicals are generated then free radicals are destroyed all those things are going on there are many millions of reactions are going on, but enzymes you know enzymes are very good catalyst they are they are protein molecules having large molar mass okay. they are very complex structure active sites are there. Okay. There are many active sites uh, like this one see the here this is the active site. So, here active site you know particular substrate can come here and fit itself. So, here there are two things you see red one and green one. So, it can fit and it the reaction goes on here okay. and then react after the reaction they are separated they um, they are cleaved. So, so, so reaction is going on in this active site. Okay. It, they are very good catalyst and very mild conditions at very under very mild conditions they can um, do the reaction this is another thing and they are very selective also there may be many compounds they are in the system, but only uh, particular substance will uh, will uh, uh, will come here in the active site and do the reaction okay. that is very important for enzyme very specific. Okay. In this site some molecules can be accommodated, but most others are not if not are not even if 
they have similar structure. Maybe structure is very similar, but still they cannot be accommodated. There are many factors, size factor and uh, functionality factor, there are many things. So, they, they cannot be accommodated. Okay. Now, so if they are not accommodated, then, uh, then catalyst, catalytic effect will not be there for that uh, other substance. Okay. Um, now, uh, there may be some molecules in some cases a second molecule can bind itself to the active site of the catalyst thus preventing the catalyst catalyst action this is called inhibitor. Sometimes the, the activity is lost because of the presence of some other compound um, foreign compound uh, and then the activity of that um, particular uh, place is lost. Okay. So, this is called inhibitor. Recently, many catalysts are being designed. So, uh, uh, the design and synthesized many catalysts which are not enzymes, but other catalysts are being de de designed and synthesized. These are efficient like enzymes, means this is the um, synthesized catalysts, okay. but they are they have the similar properties of enzymes and can bring about reaction selectively. So, this is not enzyme, but uh, synthetic. Uh, compounds synthetic uh, catalyst, okay, but their activity is similar to enzymes that is done. Now, you can see I have given some examples you know adipic acid, adipic acid and sorbitol they can react to form a polyester, okay, polyester and they are lipase which is, a, which is, a, which is an enzyme that can act as a catalyst in that particular reaction, you know polyester it is very important in textiles and many other purposes. So, it is um, lipase is the catalyst for that particular reaction. Another example glycerol plus fatty acid okay, tri acyl glycerol here also lipase as the catalyst sometimes these enzymes are also immobilized on some solid surface okay, to so that we it can be recovered easily. So, that is also a very good um, enzyme, but supported enzyme okay, that is also very good catalyst. So, there are many awards also if you can develop something uh, green chemistry award, academic green chemistry award all those things are there uh, for catalyst development. Uh, and if they are very green, uh, green catalyst then it is again it is uh, better for environmental purpose. So, this is bio catalyst. Now, the references you can uh, read this uh, all this is the same references this book again I am mentioning it is really really nice book and some figures also I have uh, drawn uh, following the, this book. So, you can read this book to get better idea uh, uh, and uh, uh, you have seen. So, uh, in this uh, lecture what you have seen that uh, how we can uh, uh, we can explain the homogeneous and heterogeneous catalysis and enzyme catalysis uh, and uh, what are the mechanisms that is happening there and uh, what is the activation energy um, and um, how the catalyst behaves um, those are also uh, elaborated in this um, lecture. Thank you.